Hi, my name is Nick, and today we will be painting the eyes texture. This video is part of a series of material tutorials that I have created especially for you. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and you don't miss any of my tutorials. To begin creating the eyes texture, we'll start with our familiar friend, the isometric cube made of line work. You can easily find a base template by searching for an isometric cube PNG on Google. Next, I fill in the cube's surface with varying shades of turquoise, each differing slightly in tone. Turquoise serves as a foundational color for this texture. Since ice allows light to pass through, I begin by adding soft highlight to the shadow areas using a standard soft brush. This helps convey the translucent nature of the eyes. Next, I fill in the isometric cube with appropriate shading, light on the top plane, mid-tone on the left side and shadow on the right. This establishes the basic lighting structure. Now I begin sketching the natural irregularities of the eye's surface using a light turquoise hue. I outline the edges and subtle variations in thickness and texture to create the illusion of real, imperfect eyes. I add potholes, cracks and subtle imperfections to give the eyes its natural, textured appearance transforming it into a realistic and visually compelling piece of frozen surface. To create a realistic pothole or scratches texture, start by drawing the shape using a darker tone on a separate layer, ideally placed at the joint where two surfaces meet. Pay close attention to the direction of the light source as it plays a crucial role in defining the depth and thickness of the pothole. Use highlights and shadows strategically to enhance the illusion of volume. You can follow along with my steps in the video for a clearer visual demonstration. Next, I refine the shape of our ice briquette by clarifying its edges and corners using a fine brush and a light turquoise color. I draw sharp lines to emphasize the structure to enhance realism, I add small visible chips and fractures at the corners where eyes naturally tends to break. This thin, deliberate strokes help convey the brittle, crystalline nature of frozen water, adding depth and authenticity to the form. Now that we are moving into the more routine part of the rendering process, layering, refining and adding subtle effect. Let's take a moment to really appreciate what we are trying to capture here, because ice is much more than just frozen water. Ice is a natural occurring crystalline solid. When water freezes, its molecules slow down and begin to arrange themselves into a very specific hexagonal lattice structure. This structured form is what gives ice its unique properties transparency, its brittleness, and its ability to reflect and refract light in mesmerizing ways. Think about it, a single cube of ice can catch a beam of light, break it apart and scatter it in a soft, shimmering glow. It can hold tiny air bubbles like memories trapped beneath the surface. It can fracture unpredictably creating sharp edges and delicate cracks that gives it character. And when you look closely, you will notice that ice isn't just white or blue. It has subtle tones of turquoise, grey and even hints of violet in the shadows. In our artwork, we're not just painting a cold cube, we're recreating a moment in nature. A frozen shape that looks simple but is built on complex physics and delicate detail. The goal is to make this cube feel like something you could actually touch, something cold, something fragile, something real. By adding light reflection, transparency, cracks and bubbles, 
we are telling a quiet visual story about time, temperature and transformation. So as I continue refining the piece, keep these qualities in mind, because understanding what we are painting helped us paint it better. Finally, with a soft brush, I redraw the direction of the light stripes, enhancing the tone of the left wall of ice. Interestingly, ice is lighter than water, which is why it floats. That's because, unlike most substances, water expands when it freezes. This expansion creates small air pockets and makes ice less dense, a small but fascinating miracle of physics. Sometimes you might notice a bluish tint in thick ice. That's not just your eyes playing tricks. Glacial ice, for example, appears blue because the deeper it is, the more it absorbs light and scatters blue wavelength. As we draw this simple ice cube, our goal is to make it look as realistic as possible. Cracks, tiny air bubbles, shimmering highlights and that cold glassy glow, these are the features that bring our frozen block to life. You might not know, but scientists have identified over 15 different types of ice each with its own structure formed under unique conditions. It's amazing to think that such a familiar material has such complexity. Even the slipperiness of ice has a hidden story. Pure ice isn't actually slippery. It becomes slippery because of a microscopically thin layer of melted water that forms under pressure or friction. Finally, there is something poetic. Ice has memory. Trapped air bubbles and internal cracks can preserve information about the atmosphere from thousands of years ago, making every frozen piece a tiny time capsule. So while we sketch and shade this cube, remember, it's more than just a cold object. It's a beautiful and intricate form of nature, and recreating that in our digital art is both challenge and a joy. Next, create a new layer and select any textured brush that resembles splashes or scatter. Using this brush, add subtle patterns to mimic air bubbles trapped within the frozen ice. These textures help suggest that the cube was once liquid water and now contains frozen oxygen bubbles inside, adding realism and depth to the ice structure. This step enhances the natural look of the ice and communicates its watery origin. Using the erase tool with a soft, low opacity brush, gently erase the edges of the bubble textures. This creates a natural blur, mimicking how real ice appears. If you look closely at a real piece of ice, you will notice that light penetrates its surface and scatters through its depth. This scattering causes the edges of internal textures like trapped air bubbles to appear soft and diffused. By replicating this effect, you enhance the realism of your ice surface. Use the rectangular marquee tool to select a square or triangular section on a new layer. This selection will confine your brush strokes to the shape, allowing for precise control. With a soft round brush, gently paint within the selected area using a light turquoise or white tone. Gradually fade one edge to create a smooth gradient from a sharp highlighting to a soft transition mimicking how light reflects off faced ice surface. This technique adds subtle depth and dimension suggesting a glossy semi-transparent texture. To add dimension and realism to our ice cube, Add subtle highlights along the joint where the left and right side meet. Using a white brush, draw thin lines that converge close to the edges where the planes intersect. Then select the smooch tool and gently smooch these lines outward. This creates a soft glow effect, mimicking the way light naturally reflects off the sharp edges of transparent surfaces like ice. I make all major changes on separate layer to maintain full control over the process. This way, if something doesn't turn out as expected, I can easily adjust 
or delete individual elements without affecting the overall shape or texture avoiding any risk of ruining the final result. You can see that I am adding a highlight in the right corner. Even within the shadow area, this subtle touch enhances the depth and dimensionality of the cube, giving it a more realistic and volumetric appearance. And there we have it! Our ice cube is complete! We've gone from a simple geometric shape to a realistic looking piece of ice, filled with texture, cracks, bubbles and subtle lighting. By carefully learning detail and playing with transparency and highlights, we brought it to life. Don't be afraid to experiment with colors, lighting and brush technique. That's where the magic of realism happens. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and feel free to share your result in the comments. See you in the next video!